Hello and welcome back to Remnant 2. Last time we ended up clearing out the Void Vessel facility. Yeah, facility. Yeah, that's right, because that was Dark Conduit. So now we're up to here. And we'll go inside and this will continue the story through Nerud. And I think this should be our last fight before... It spits us out to the beginning and we fight the final boss. Yeah, okay. I, I know this fight. I want to say this is one of the areas, because there's a few like this, that are just loaded to the brim with little side paths you can take. Yeah, I really hate the shield guys. Mostly because when the shield is up, they just gain flat damage reduction all over. And that's really annoying to deal with. The shield... I'm not sure if it's dependent on raw damage or volume of fire. Because I could see a case being made for making a shield that's raw damage focused, so that you either have to chew through it with a lot of rounds or just hit him with high power. But I also think having a, a limit like how many hits it takes could be an interesting design because then it's more, you need to have somebody with a spam weapon to deal with this, otherwise you're wasting a lot of ammo. Yeah, because that explosion took the shield out, and then he died almost immediately after. So it makes me think it's just damage, and because I'm using a lot of high rate of fire weapons, I'm just kind of pissing away ammo at it. Which, it's whatever. Even though in my Remnant 1 playthrough I was rocking the double barrel over-under for the ages... I I don't like the coach gun in this. Mostly because when you can get stuff like the black moss so easily, it's hard to kind of justify using other weapons. Yeah, screw it, let's jump down. Uh, enough Luminite Crystal to unlock one more thing. Hang on. Okay, so you can't jump to there. I was gonna say, could you jump to that and kind of crawl through? Because that looks like something you could do, but if you do that jump wrong, you're going to go splat. Constant variable ring. Increased range damage up to 20% based on weapons cur uh, current weapons overheat value. So that is what you'd use. 
Actually, you could use that in conjunction with the micro... Is it microprocessor? Microcompressor. Which is this one. Reduces heat generation per round when firing weapons that overheat by 30%. Increases decay rate. So what you do is you take any weapon, either the laser rifle or the bone saw, slap the mod that gives you shots back into the magazine, you slap those on so that you have that heat just going, and you combine them. Oh, I am out of that ammo, that's... Wonder what that is. We'll survive. Open that up. Now, this fight, we gotta be quick. Come on, touch the thing. Okay, so we gotta be quick with this fight, simply because we are not here permanently. So we'll be close, grab all that, and I think that's everything. Cool. Yeah, it just, it spits you out so fast. So you have to be right on top of them. Now, what did we get? Time wave. Oh, yep, mod, you supply slow status on enemies within 7 meters. See, this might be useful on the SMG. When we max it, simply for the increase this weapon's range damage by 15% to enemies inflicted with slow. Considering we can perma slow. Which I got real scared because I had an update and I was worried that they would patch it. And I was like, please don't patch this. This is such a like niche use case realistically. Like, yeah, I can slow guys, and that lets me kind of leverage a few abilities. But that's about it. Ooh, I can get 20% extra damage if I have an enemy with a debuff on him. Okay, cool, so I just can put a debuff on him. Oh, I can get... Actually, I can start seeing the... I can see the matrix here. I, I can see the code. You get the extra damage. 15% damage against enemies with slow. Toss that on. 20% damage against enemies suffering from a status effect. Timekeeper's Jewel. We can maybe swap that out at some point for... I don't know. We, we could find something that would let us get real gross. I'm not seeing anything off the rip, but we could probably find something. Eventually we could, and yeah, we could see, as I'm saying this, I know I'm hyping this up to be something it isn't, because it's not going to be some one tap God Slayer build. At best, it's gonna be some mid-tier, like, oh, you can do a little bit of damage, but you're building entirely around this. You're, I'd probably be giving up some survivability. I'd probably be giving up sustain. I am realistically probably kneecapping my build. And that's about it.
but it's fun to think. Okay, I gotta ride this elevator again, because I, I don't remember. I think this elevator has a drop-off point somewhere. Ah, I hate it. I hate trying to figure out what what elevators have the hole because some of them have a hole in the wall it's not this one okay but yeah some of them have holes in the wall and you got to be very diligent about spotting them because it's in these areas and they'll have just tons of branching off paths with some loot and I don't want to pass up loot my main build sure I don't care I got like almost everything the gear and loot that I'm missing are, like, very obscure things. But with this character, I'm missing so much that I just don't want to miss things. In case the game is like, oh hey, so we've decided to spawn the Turbo Supreme ring that's good. You should probably grab it. Because that'll be the one time I'm like, ah, I don't need to grab it, it's... It's gonna be trash. See right there, I got ammo back by just launching my energy beam. We have a few different options for weapons, so it'll be cool to kind of test out stuff. I already know. The Krell Axe is really good. I do enjoy it. The... Huntress Spear, I'm not a big fan of, mostly because there's an elemental effect to it. But the axe, I, if, if I find it, I'm going to definitely use it. If I can't find it, I'm going to be big sad. Because that is... I'm, I'm overselling stuff, I know I am. It's It's good. The problem I have is, like, controller sometimes will just hitch... And I'll be swinging, and it'll count it. Instead of two swings, it'll count as me trying to charge attack. And then my guy will just be getting his face punched in as he's, like, rearing back to throw something. I'm like, no, please stop. Not like this. Oh, this is a down elevator. Very short down elevator. It'd be nice if they gave you something for picking up those. Oh, I guess get 500 scrap. Shows how well I pay attention. Because as I say, it kind of sucks when you pick up all these skill books and the game's like, nah, you don't get any more skills. Okay, nothing here either, man. Bad luck on the elevators this time around. Or I missed it. I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't miss things. This, it's not, it's, it's a wacky boss, but it's not like, who whoa, wacky, it's just like, this is unexpected. Alright, come and get some. 
myself. Ooh, the lore. The custodian has sealed our tomb. Its ineffable calculus has concluded the route will be impervious to whatever powers Alepsis Torah might bring to bear. Those who wish to see their creator face to metaphysical face have taken this as a blessing and acted accordingly. Nerud's course has been set. Our doom is now inevitable. I cannot foresee what will occur. I only know it will not end well for the Drazir. The Custodian's calculations may be rational enough, but they are incongruent with the foresight of the Astropaths, those for whom the Ember has granted sight. Alas, our insight is not enough to sway our people. It is irrelevant now. I have been overruled, and there is nothing more we can do. And perhaps I am wrong. Perhaps, although my very bones say otherwise, our creator awaits us within the black hole. I truly hope so, but I do not believe it. I work now to establish contingencies. I have protected my chambers against a variety of forces. I will lock myself within, along with any who would join me. With luck, perhaps we might weather whatever may come. We will have a limited amount of sustenance. Unless we want to subsist on the Abbot Ember itself, of course. But I suspect we need not hide for long. We should know immediately whether Lepsis Tora will suffer us to live. And the Rusted Navigator's Pendant, this is... I'm definitely going to switch off this, even though Jester's Bell is good. Because this is 15 health, 15 stamina, and minus 15 encumbrance. So now we can get even heavier armor. Go Fey Armor. Actually, it's all Fey Armor right now. Grab the Lado Mark Twos. And I know the Lado legs are gonna be, yeah, 10 over. Because at this point... We might as well just rock heavy gear and try to get back to 49. But there's not really anything else we can do. So now we are... Mostly Engineer Man. Looking like Discount Isaac from Dead Space. Okay, so we have this elevator, which I think you only take if you don't hop in the chair. Because only one person can hop in the chair.
kind of wish they had properly combined all the different ghosts instead of just the pink and orange. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I thought we were getting to this phase. Yep. Screwed that one up. And we got Seeker Residue. The Nerud in the little lore thing for the item, kind of acknowledging that as much as they wanted to say that their creation was merely just genetics and luck, that there was kind of a spiritual element to it, a proverbial and, in this case, literal ghost in the machine. Essentially them discovering the existence of the soul. Which is pretty cool. It's a neat way to spin things. Let's see anything around in here? Oh yeah, big thing. And that's the last seeker key. So we have that, but... I'm trying to think... I think we have to go back to the start, because I need to find the one chamber that had... The thing I could use the data spike on. So we'll come back here, but we'll get that done first, because I I know what item it is, but I'd like to get it regardless. Because I believe the override is for the final boss. Okay, so it turns out, here's where I need to go, here's where we were. <laughs> I was running around trying to figure it out, and I was just a little walk away. I think, was this it? No. Even though I can get the void, I actually, I should probably get that here. 
Okay, so... See, I can get the Luminite. Or I'm one Luminite short. Do I need it for anything else? No. Okay. So we're going to give up... We're going to give up the Salvage Heart. Why? Because... What we're about to do... Is one of those point of no return type beats. Huh. I know you could get dark fluid here. But God, I yeah, so we gotta go down. But what we're gonna do is with the override pin, it lets us get the better weapon. But it comes at the cost of we cannot return to Nerud in this playthrough. The memory spike in or memory core. Now we have access to the core booster, which is an amulet that gives us weak spot damage after killing an enemy, so it's very, very niche. Meteorite Shard Ring, which we picked up, increases encumbrance by 50, but increases unarmed damage by 50%. So you can do kind of a boxer build. And then Vice Grips, they're just claws. Since there's no ability tied to them, there are better options. I thought this was where you got... the laser rifle. Not the, the okay. There's the laser rifle, and there's the pulse rifle. I thought this is where you got the pulse rifle, because that was kind of important. It's it's whatever. It's the engineer or technician or whatever they call it. Their starting weapon. It's just a Nerudian rifle that fires three round bursts. It's okay. It's nothing special. To my knowledge, I don't think anybody's found any, like, super powerful builds you can do with it. I think, for the most part, people like it because it's a burst. And that makes it controllable and a lot more manageable in fights. Or you could just get good. I don't know. Just me. Sucks we're not going to get the last item. But this relic... As you can see, on use heals 34.5 health over 0.25 seconds and restores 300% of gray health. So you have to be setting up a build that's all around generating gray health and then you can heal out of it. Which there are builds that do that. I just don't like them. And I think for a lot of it you have to focus on doing the gray health. And I, I just, I don't think it's a good build focus. Gonna do this and I'm gonna check quick the pulse rifle just to make sure that I'm right in, we can't get it. Okay, let's see what the Pulse Rifle says for acquiring. Oh, yep. I, I couldn't have done it. It's a version of that little area below the Custodian, but it requires the Decorum Cipher, which you need to have the train dungeon spawn. And we didn't get it, so... Even if I wanted to, I couldn't pick it up for this run. That'll be a adventure mode type beat. Which is fine. It, I've said before, it's nice that there's a lot of incentive to rerun stuff and to help other players because there's so many items. 
and so many permutations of areas. Alright, touch this quick. Even though I didn't need to. This really does kind of remind me of Rom from Remnant 1. So I kind of get why they didn't include Rom, but I also miss it because Rom, as much as it was high tech, it was essentially post apocalyptic, while this is like still high tech, but the people have all been wiped out. Sorry, Custodian, I'm crashing this thing, no survivors. Power saver at max health, chance to not use a relic charge. That one, in some of these kind of infinite team heal kind of builds, might actually be a good option. Because the whole focus is to just continually have relics healing on a healer player and them healing the rest of the team so if you could get a free charge I guess I've been screwing up and calling them Nerudians when it's the Drazir. But I mean, this, this is where they live, so they're inhabitants of Nerud. Okay, so we're all kitted out. All ready to go. We'll actually chug a Tranquility font. Reduces reticle sway spread and gun recoil by 35%. That'll be useful. Last through death. Get our summon. This way we can heal out of everything. Use the console there to shut it down. Once complete, I can gain access and save Nerud. Sorry, homie. We don't play that game. And the reason we're doing this this way is because the 
other weapon you get isn't that good. Like, it's a good weapon, but it's a melee weapon, and I have no need for it. Yeah, welcome to this fight. It's kind of nuts. It's definitely one of those, you either got this fight or you don't got it. There is no in-between. Leave me alone! Okay, phase one done. Yeah, and you can see the fun part here. He's immune to slow. Oh god, no. Must escape. Yeah, this fight is rough. This dude don't pull punches. Let me be free! Another summon dead. You know those aren't cheap, my guy. Oh god, black hole. Or just laser, okay. I'll take laser. Because I can face tank laser. Yeah, they're all dead. Just to prove it. You can't go anywhere. It is kind of sad just dooming an entire people, but I feel like they were already doomed. As we saw, they were more or less just zombies.
and bug infestations. Whatever the Drizir once was is no longer there. The custodian was made by the Drizir and he's just piloting it, trying to do, I guess, something. But they're all gone. So I don't feel too terrible. Okay, so we can get Helix from the Seeker Residue. You shoot a cluster of rockets and they hit something and then split and then go after other enemies. It's not good. It's it, it's awful, honestly. This gun, though. A Felion. Bye. This is a bad boy. You gotta see this thing in action. It's... This is another one of those, please be careful when using this weapon kind of deals. First off... That nice line, you will hit your teammates with this. Don't even be like, oh, I'm better. No, you're going to hit your teammates. And this, you will hit your teammates as well. That may not seem like much, but when that thing hits, it hits hard. Let's try just a impact. So yeah, the Aphelion, it's a cool weapon. Definitely has its uses. As you can see, Supernova explodes for 172, dealing 805 over 20 seconds to all targets within 4 meters. If you shoot it, it increases the explosion radius by 50% or 25%, damage by 50%, spawns a massive shockwave that deals 300 fire, and also applies the initial burning amount. So it also applies the, th the 800 burning over time. So if we do, okay, damage by 50%, so you're looking at... Roughly 86 added on, so you're looking at 250 some fire damage on the initial explosion, 300, so you're at 550 ish fire damage, plus the 800. That's. it's dangerous. I don't know how much of a boss nuker it really is, it's good for wave clear. That is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.